Hi guys, this is Chiquit for Cancer. Um, my name is Jody, and I have been living with stage four metastatic breast cancer for the last 10 years. Um, it is triple negative, and it has ping pong through my body, taken various body parts, and is now settled in my bones. Um, I currently have a tumor on my lower spine and uh, mets on my left hip, my long bone on my left leg, my rib cage, um, and a couple other spots that I, I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Today I am celebrating uh, 400 subscribers. And yes, this is my annoying little dog. He wants to play ball constantly. So we're gonna try to ignore him. <laughs> anyway, um, this is Friday, and we have been on quarantine for, what, six weeks now? I think, like, well, I've been on quarantine for six weeks, I don't know about y'all. <laughs> I think every state is different and every country is different, but for California, in America here, uh, we have been on quarantine for six weeks. Hmm. We are waiting to see if the governor of California will be lifting it at the end of this month, or if we, were, we will continue on this strict of quarantine until, um, May 15th so that's where I'm at and I have been cleaning I have been organizing I have been stressing <laughs> if you saw my last um, video I was cleaning up my closet <laughs> and you guys were helping me decide what to keep what to throw away so today's topic is about the cost of cancer and I'm not talking about like the cost of well, I am talking about the financial cost, but the cost of cancer in just a little bit of different way. Um, like the cost that it, the stress that it puts on us. Like for example, um, having your treatments canceled because your insurance won't cover this medication or that medication. And then finding out that you have to pay out of pocket an enormous amount because someone at the front desk didn't know that and screwed up, so you have to pay for it. Those type of things. That's the cost of cancer, that's part of it. Okay, another part of it is um, being transferred around to different doctors and getting to know different doctors, getting to trust different doctors, the, the stress that it puts on you when you have two different doctors and they have two opposite opinions about what they should do. For example, like right now, when I first, when they first found the tumor on my spine, which was about four years ago, they said that uh, it was inoperable, that it would be too dangerous to take it out and that it would actually cause the cancer to spread if, it, if they opened me up. So at that time, I was like, of course not. Don't touch me, leave me alone. Okay, well now they're saying they scheduled me a consult with the neurosurgeon because they wanna take my tumor off on my spine. I'm like, hold on, hold your horses. Okay, so which way do you go? That is stressful because for one, I don't know who to trust because I don't have a, I don't have a medical degree. I'm not a neurosurgeon and I'm not, you know, so that is another cost of cancer, a cost of stress, stresses, you know, stresses you out. It's not the cancer itself inside my body at that time. It is people and having to decide who's right and who's wrong. And if you get it wrong, I'm the one that has to pay for it, not them, right? Okay, so that's another cost of cancer. Another thing is, um, well, okay, so on my, on my blog, um, or on my Facebook page, um, a lot of the women have shared their different financial hardships. Uh, one thing, one lady had to cash out of retirement to, um, and sell her house to pay for her chemo because her insurance lapsed while she was in the hospital and she was single and she didn't, you know, she was too sick to take care of her bill and it lapsed and so she had no insurance. So then she had to sell her house and um, cash her retirement out and go on welfare just to have chemo. So it's like the cost of cancer, right? Okay. Um, in my situation, I am very blessed. I have, I have medical insurance and it's really good insurance. However, for me to have insurance, 
at the rate that I have because I lost my full-time position because I couldn't keep up at work. So therefore I lost my medical insurance. So then I had to do COBRA. COBRA is an enormous amount of money that I can't afford, especially since I can't work full-time. So now what happens, the cost of cancer is my husband has no medical insurance, right? So I have it because we, we have to make sure that the dying girl has it, but then her husband doesn't have it. And like, for example, my husband is a very healthy person. He goes once a year for labs and finds out he's got perfect everything. Well, all of a sudden now he's got this, this sciatic nerve issue and he's in severe pain and he can barely walk. No insurance. The cost of cancer. So there's so many different things. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on, but I think the biggest cost of cancer is in that in that sense is the stress that all of that causes the cancer patient and another these are small compared to that but calling the pharmacy whoever gets through fast and not we're not with my pharmacy I've got a I have Kaiser it's just anyway you call sometimes it's an hour to get through and it's just like the same music going over and over and over. I was talking to my husband. It's like, we are going to have post-traumatic stress disorder from that song. <laughs> so that's another thing. Calling for your scans. Okay, well, I can schedule your scan on this date. Okay, then you show up that date. Oh, did you get your labs done? Okay, nobody told me to get my labs done. Nobody told me I had to have that done. Oh, yeah, always have to have your labs done before you come in. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I've been, I've been in 10 million times before, never had it done before. Oh, but this time I do, so I have to cancel that appointment, go get my labs, call my doctor, which again is another hour on the phone, figure out the lab situation, get the lab situation, go to the lab, reschedule your appointment, get there, all for one thing. All of that is hours on the phone. That right there is the cost of cancer stress 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 if you are lucky enough I know I was reading a book and it was saying you should not have to do any of those things you should have a cancer posse that does those things for you all right back up hold on okay number one they usually want the, pa the patient to be telling you know given all the information number two if you have that information given to another designated party that would be great but we all work in my family all of us are, are stretched to the limit. No one has the time in their life to take over my cancer, my cancer issues, my scheduling, my, you know, to keep everything tr on track with the insurance. My husband does it, but he also works full time. So he loses work time at work, which loses money to take care of my fan financial stuff. Okay, but who has a po who can do that? Who can really do, you know, it's idealistic, I guess, to say that you can have your own posse and you just lay down and be fed grapes and heal. That would be amazing, but that is not reality. So the cost of cancer, it is, it comes in many different forms. And I think what we have to remember as a cancer patient and as a cancer patient's family and support group, support system, and a support dog that he is he's he's trying to take off my my mic right now stop that anyway um for all of that i think the lesson is no matter what happens you can't you can't get stressed over it you have to have an attitude of this is normal this is what i'm going to expect i'm going to expect to call and wait an hour i'm going to get my book and i'm going to read it while i wait on the line i'm not going to be mad because i have to wait an hour i'm going to expect it when you start expecting things to go crappy it's a little less stressful and i know that sounds really crazy and you're going to say jody you are not a psychiatrist you better you better stop that but really just from my own experience and i've had 20 years of doing this so I have a lot of experience. Um, I think if you stop putting your expectations up here in regards to the medical community, the system, how they work, all the different things that cause 
more stress on us. I think if you put your expectations down here, then if they get met up here, then yay, you feel good. But just kind of, you know, plan for it. You know, I know it sucks. And there's no way to plan for losing a job or plan for, you know what, there are some things we just have to live through and grow from. And that's, that's what I encourage all of you guys to do. You know, I know that I know Sweet Jean. I remember uh, seeing your blog last week and my heart broke for you because I have been there with the insurance people and I have done that and I know it sucks. So, you know, supporting each other, feeling that, that like, oh, I know how you feel. That relieves stress right there, knowing that you're not in it alone. So, number one, put your expectations really low in regards to that type of thing. You know, the, the, technical, the technical issues of having cancer, the financial issues, all that. Put your, just expect it to be crappy, and then that'll take a little stress off. The second thing is plan. You know, do your planning, um, you know, for the, the long hold times or this or that. Just plan, plan for it. And then if it doesn't happen, you've got extra time on your hands. Excuse me, on your hands. All right. You know what? I think that is it for today. I am feeling better. I'm doing great. I hope you guys are all doing the same. Stay inside. Stay safe. Wear your mask, you know the routine. And oh, and Wednesday, I will go ahead and wear uh, the dress that you guys said I should keep. <laughs> All right, this is To Keep For Cancer. If you have not subscribed to my channel and would like to, I would love it if you join our family. Hit subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss out on anything good. And I will see you next Wednesday, or this Wednesday. This is To Keep For Cancer signing off. Bye.